So, yeah, the house prices are fucking mad in London, isn't it? Yeah. Nothing is impossible, but it's very difficult. You know? If anyone's watching this right now and they want to say what to buy a property in London, go ahead. But if you think it's too difficult, I would say go outside of London and buy properties outside of London first. And eventually, the house prices outside of London, they will increase to the point where maybe you could save enough money. Maybe if you sold the, the, the properties that you owned outside of London, hopefully London will kind of like reach a cap. And once you sold those properties, you maybe have enough money to buy properties in London or buy at least one property in London. Do you know what? Yeah, to get a cheap property in London, right? Buy a property on auction. Yeah? But you're going to have to fix it up and do work to it. That's the only thing. But the London house prices, obviously, I ain't no mortgage advisor, nothing like that, anyway. So don't take my word for it. It's gospel, yeah? But the London house prices are, are expensive, man. Are expensive. Man, like even an area like Tottenham, Tottenham, you know, Tottenham, you know, blood, you know, a three bed house in Tottenham, five, six hundred grand, you know, just a normal terraced house. Like, if you're thinking a detached house, but think again, I'm talking about a normal terraced house, yeah, it's all right inside, it's decent inside, nothing amazing. Five, six hundred grand, Tottenham, fam, Tottenham, blood. Not too far away from Broadwater Farm. Five, six hundred grand, fam. That's what you call gentrification at its best. Like, there was one road, there's one road in Tottenham where you've got, you've got two roads where you've got, you've got one road called Westfield Road and Phillip Lane and you've got this, this road that takes in between the two. It's called Lawrence Road. There used to be factories on this road. Derelict factories. Like, where Yardie man will probably break in and have illegal raves and dances inside these factories. Isn't it? Derelict factories. They lit the factories down and they built houses there, isn't it? Yeah. Flats, should I say. They built flats there. You know, the flats, right? If you bought the flat off plan, it may have been worth 250 let let's say. One bed flat, you know, 250 by the time you bought it and it was finished, the flat was worth like 270, 280. The flat's probably started at 300 anyway. So by the time you bought it and it finished, completed, a year later it was worth 325, gone up by 25 grand. Tottenham, you know, Tottenham fam. Obviously, Dolce David, you're from Wolverhampton, aren't it? Yeah. And even there, the house prices are expensive as well. Fucking hell, fam. That Wolverhampton village. Blah, man, seen properties there for like seven, eight hundred grand. Wolverhampton, fam. Wolverhampton is the fucking sums. Now, Edmonton's bad, but fucking hell, I think Wolverhampton is more broke than Edmonton. Wolverhampton is more broke than Edmonton. I thought Edmonton was broke. Wolverhampton is, yeah, it's as broke as Edmonton. It's like an extension of Edmonton, man. Them areas like Leighton as well, fucking hell. All them areas are, but in response to your question, do you think the millennials have um, an impossible task of buying property? I said nothing's impossible on it, but you you gotta you stand a better chance if you buy a property with someone. In don't do what you want. You can buy a property with a woman. That's up to you. I'll say not to, but maybe go in partnership with like a family member or something like that. Me personally, I always recommend just buy your own thing and do your own thing, but. Yeah, if you can go in partnership with a family member like a sibling or something, it's up to you. Um, maybe do that. But you know, you don't have to live in you know the inner city of London. You could just live out on the outskirts. Plenty of nice places on the outskirts in Hertfordshire, Essex. Don't come to Northampton; it's dead up here. 